Uh, one of the ways that the Hillary Clinton campaign has attempted to deflect attention over the DNC leaks has been to focus on not what's in the leaks, but who might have caused the leaks to happen in the first place. And they're blaming the Russians. Okay? And they're saying that the Russians might have hacked in, stolen these emails, and then had them released to benefit Donald Trump. Uh, now, that is a funny way to deflect attention from the actual content, which I think we can focus on without first worrying about the Russians. But it turns out that once you look into it, there's actually quite a bit of uh, interplay between the Trump campaign and various economic and political interests in Russia. Uh, so first of all, here you're going to see in this video, uh, Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook laying out the charge. Well, I think the DNC needs to look into this and take uh, appropriate action, and I'm sure that they will. What's disturbing to us is that we uh, experts are telling us that uh, Russian state actors broke into the DNC, stole these emails, and uh, other experts are now saying that they are the Russians are releasing these emails for the purpose of actually helping Donald Trump. I don't think it's coincidental that these emails were released uh, on the eve of our convention here, and and that's disturbing. Uh, and I think we need to be concerned about that. I think we need to be concerned that we also saw uh, at last week at the Republican convention that Trump and his allies made changes to the Republican platform uh, uh, to make it more pro-Russian. But it's a very, very strong charge that you're leveling here. <clears throat> you're basically suggesting that Russians hacked into the DNC and now are releasing these files through WikiLeaks to help elect Donald Trump. Well, this isn't my assertion. Uh, there are a number of experts that are asserting this. I think we need to get to the bottom of these facts, but that, that is what experts are telling us. So was this a Russian plot to benefit the Trump campaign? Let's go through a little bit of the evidence really fast. Uh, first of all, uh, economically, what's the interest that the Trump campaign might have uh, that would tie them to the Russians? Uh, since the 1980s, Trump and his family members have made numerous trips to Moscow in search of business opportunities, and they've relied on Russian investors to buy their properties around the world. And we're going to have some details on uh, particular instances of that uh, as well. Uh, now, you should know that after his bankruptcy uh, and some of his business failures over the past 10 years or so, uh, Trump has actually been blackballed by most of the major U.S. banks, with the exception of Deutsche Bank. one of the reasons that he started to try to get these foreign investors to be interested in uh, a number of his different business ventures. So let's talk about Paul Manafort, campaign manager for the Trump campaign. Now, he says these accusations are ridiculous. Of course he's going to say that, but Paul Manafort is not completely innocent in this. Uh, so he actually spent most of the last decade as a top campaign and communications advisor for Viktor Yanukovych, the pro-Russian Ukrainian prime minister, uh, and then president who, once he was ousted back in 2014, uh, led to the ongoing crisis and the proxy war between Russia and the Ukraine that's going on uh, to this day. Uh, you've got Carter Page, who's a foreign policy advisor uh, for Trump, uh, whose entire professional career has revolved around investments in Russia, uh, in particular having to do with uh, Gazprom, the economic political conglomerate of oil interests in Russia. That has been his main business. And so, you and then, I mean, we can go through a number of different uh, members of the Trump campaign, but there are ties. And when you combine that with Putin's very positive language and compliments towards Donald Trump, it's not impossible that he would want to make things a bit more difficult for Hillary Clinton this early on in the campaign. Okay, now let me tell you what is absolutely uh clear to me. And then we'll get to the things that are slightly unclear. So um, when Putin first started complimenting Trump, I thought, ah, that's a strong man, a strong man. Plus, Putin thinks this guy will be an idiot. It'll be just like George Bush, who thought he looked into my eyes and saw my soul and thought I was a nice guy. Great. Another Republican idiot I'll take advantage of. That was my assumption. But now that we know their ties, no, they, it appears that he was trying to support Trump. And then Trump came back. Now, my assumption in the beginning was, if anyone compliments Trump, he'll come out and go, that guy's fantastic, he's tremendous, right? Yeah. And that's what I thought he was doing with Putin. But no, it turns out, he's gotten money from people connected to Putin for all the way back to, to the 1980s, but also very recently. And he can't, as John explained, the Talking Points Memo has a great article about this, very specific details about how he cannot borrow money from people, then he goes and borrows money from people connected to Putin. So that complimentary stuff back and forth has a history we were not aware of. Now, the reason why I say all this is clear is, okay, all of that, which is overwhelming evidence, but to me, there, there was a moment where I was like, whoa, that is not just Trump being like, oh, I like this guy who likes me. When they started talking about how maybe we won't defend those yes. NATO countries that yep. Russia might do aggression against, Estonia, et cetera, I was like, Wow, that is, 
I've never seen anything like that. Say you won't protect the NATO country. What is going on here? This is more than just a buddy romance here. Okay, we're into a whole different level. And the language and it, with the platform having to do with decreasing some of the aid to the Ukraine. Which at the time I did not pay much attention to. But now when you connect it back to it, Trump, if you remember, I told you on the show, was very disconnected with what was happening with the party platform. Yeah. He let Tony Perkins run it from the Family Research Council. They're like, oh, we hate the gays. Trump's like, I don't care about gays. You want to hate them? Then go ahead. Put it in the platform. Right, what do I, I care? John Casey, um, you want to be my running mate? Go yeah. ahead. Run foreign and domestic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He doesn't thing. care. He doesn't care. But there was a moment when they started talking about what we should do with Ukraine and whether we should arm them against the Russians. All of a sudden, all of uh, Trump's guys show up and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get crazy here. We're not going to arm the Ukrainians against the Russians. This yeah. is the one yeah. thing you care well, about? It's just strange because Trump has never been specific about any policy ideas. Maybe he's been a little specific about building a wall, but not really, right? But when it comes to NATO, it was, it came, for my opinion, in my opinion, it came out of nowhere. All of a sudden, he's discuss discussing NATO. He's giving Putin, like, a roadmap to Estonia, yeah. which was yeah. also very strange and very out of nowhere. Putin, Trump is not a specific person. He doesn't really think through any policy ideas. Yeah. I think this all kind of comes together and makes a lot of sense. The ties to Russia definitely make yeah, sense. Yeah, and Tom, Thomas uh, Henry Gildas, who's the president of Estonia, he said, yeah. how can America see this? and vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. Because it, it matters, the ripple effect is incomprehensible, not because Trump even knows what he's doing. And, and that's the problem, is that he probably yeah. doesn't. You know. And what I love about this too is that we're in the middle of a campaign where we're worried about the influence of big donors on politicians. Right. And so you rightly would be really worried if you found out that Hillary Clinton had been given $50 million to make herself president. But it should be equally worrying if he was given $50 million to build some shitty hotel. Like, just because he wanted to build some Soho Trump, he's going to hand over countries? He's going to hand over NATO countries to Vladimir Putin? Which, you is, know why, what he's which is why these, the, the, some of the Sanders voters who are saying that they would never vote for Hillary, that they'll vote for Trump, and it's whatever small percentages, I don't understand that. I mean, that's, that's just like, you know, uh, being a rebellious teenager to your parents. Yeah, you but know, I so. think that's a really small number. I think a lot... Yeah, I agree with you, but yeah, I, whatever I, percentage it is, you yeah, know, it's, it's... Yeah, I think the Sanders supporters might say that they're going to vote for Jill Stein or not The highest vote. number I've seen is right. 5%, so we're yeah. not talking about a it's lot not of people. That, yeah, okay, but in terms of Trump, you know what he's doing? He's making a deal. Yeah, he's making he, deals. He's making of deals. everyone. It's the art of the deal. He's like, look, you guys fund me. Thank you very much. No one else will fund me because I've gone bankrupt four times. Which creditor in their right mind would give money to someone who brags about how he screwed over his other creditors? And it was a savvy business move of his to not pay them. Yeah. So now I think he was about always it. Winning. I don't know. Is yeah, but think about it also from the Russian perspective. Now, I don't quite know why they gave him the money in the first place because some of the money goes a long way back. Some of it was pre bankruptcies, I get that. But after the bankruptcies, like, maybe because Trump was constantly flirting with running for president, because he's been doing this for quite well, some it's, time. It's not just that. It's also they got to get their money out of Russia. So getting your money yeah. into American that's interests and point. foreign interests yeah. gets it out of Russia. Yeah. So that's a big so part there, of it. A lot of Chinese do that. A lot yeah. of Saudis do that as well. So th this is a huge, huge problem. What I don't know, what is unclear is did the Russians then hack in on purpose to Hillary's to the DNC, let alone Hillary Clinton's server, we don't know about, and then get the stuff and then are now using it to help their friend Trump win so that he'll owe them Estonia and, and, and other places. <laughs> Maybe. That's not perfectly proven out yet, though it is quite plausible given what has been proven out. And finally, I want to lay out a scenario for you that I find plausible at this point. Trump, at this point, has a, has a lead in the election. I know the DNC is happening right now. It hasn't happened yet. But he does have a lead for the moment being. And there is great disunity in the Democratic Party. There is a chance that Trump wins. And then, at some point, we find out all of his deep connections to the Russians and how he owes them money and how, you know, he's a knucklehead. He'll give them something when he's in office. He'll do it. Then he'll be impeached. And then the Republicans, and you think, well, the Republicans won't impeach him. Sure, they got a vice president right now, Mike Pence, that they like a lot better than Donald Trump. That won't give them any trade wars. That'll go back to business as usual. And the Democrats will be happy to impeach him. They pull the rug out. And next thing you know, you've got a standard Republican back in office. And we're back to business as usual.